Hello everyone. I am talking on the topic minimal intervention dentistry. Thank you Oral Health Talks for providing me this opportunity to throw some light on minimal intervention dentistry, which will be useful for undergraduate students as well as the clinical practitioners. Minimally invasive procedures are the new paradigm in healthcare and our dentistry is also joining this exciting revolution. As we all know that dental caries is well recognized as controllable chronic disease that can be identified, diagnosed, and managed using biological approaches. MID is developed based on these biological concepts and evidence-based outcomes. Thus, minimal intervention dentistry is defined as a philosophy of professional care concerned with the first occurrence early detection and earliest possible cure of disease on a micro level, followed by minimally invasive treatment and patient-friendly treatment in order to repair the irreversible damage caused by such disease. It is a science of detecting, diagnosing, intercepting, and treating dental failures at a very microscopic level. So now no longer the radical extension for prevention is practiced, but it has changed to constriction with conviction. The main components of this MID, uh, which we call it as golden triangle, are the histology of the dental subsurface, which is being treated, chemical handling of the dental adhesive restrictive materials available, and what all practical operative techniques which we have. Coming to the principles involved in this, the first and foremost is disease risk assessment and early caries diagnosis classification of caries depth using radiographs, reduction of cariogenic bacteria, arresting active lesions, remineralization and monitoring of the non-cavitated arrested lesions, placement of restorations in teeth with cavitated lesions using minimal cavity designs, and here we tend to repair rather than replace the defective restorations, and the important aspect is assessing the disease management outcomes at pre-established intervals. Coming to the first um, uh, point, that is the assess assessing the risk um, uh, categories, uh, the patients who are in high risk categories are patients who are socially deprived, patients uh, who have high caries rate in their siblings and who have low knowledge of dental diseases and uh, they are not regular in their dental visits and their medical conditions result in serostomia or patients who are on long-term cariogenic drugs and their sugar intake is very frequent and they live in non-fluoridated area or they are not on any fluoride supplements, they present with uh, new lesions very often. Whereas uh, in low risk category, the patients include mostly the middle class uh, patients and uh, uh, the patients who have low caries rate in their siblings who are somewhat aware of the dental problems and uh, patients whose work doesn't allow frequent snacking and they're somewhat regular in their dental visits and uh, patients with uh, no medical uh, history affecting their salivary flow and their sugar intake is also not very frequent. They're either on fluoride supplements or they live in fluoridated area. They present with very minimal or very few new lesions. Now we have different uh, uh, techniques available for early diagnosis of uh, dental caries, which include enhanced visual techniques, uh, fiber optic transillumination, digital imaging, fiber optic transillumination, and uh, quantitative light induced fluorescence uh, works on the principle of fluorescent technique. And we have uh, laser induced fluorescence uh, uh, technology as well, uh, Diagnodent, fluorescence camera, Vista proof, LED technology, we have few systems based on electrical current measurements, such as Vanguard electronic caries detector, caries meter L, electronic caries monitor, and then we have ultrasonic system and, uh, of course, chemomechanical removal of caries. Coming to the core concept uh, of uh, in this uh, minimal intervention dentistry, that is remineralization. It is very much possible to arrest the loss of minerals associated with caries at an early stage. 
because as caries progresses into dentin, the enamel gets cavitated and then the plaque control becomes very difficult. So in such cases, the surgical caries, uh, caries removal becomes unavoidable followed by a restoration. But in non-cavitated lesions, we must first alter the environment and increase the tooth's capacity to remineralize and shift the balance away from demineralization. And this we can uh, do with decreasing the frequency of intake of refined carbohydrates with optimum plaque control, with proper salivary flow, and with enough uh, patient education. We have different remineralizing agents available with us, uh, like casein phosphopeptide amorphous calcium phosphate, which is CPP ACP, and in combination with fluoride, we have novamin, titanium technology, resin infiltrant technology, tricalcium phosphate, nanohydroxyapatite, and enamelin. Coming to CPP ACP, it is a well known, casein is a well known milk component uh, which has uh, shown to have uh, anti caries uh, properties as well. It binds readily to the tooth surface and under acidic conditions, it buffers free calcium ions, increasing the calcium phosphate level in plaque and maintains a state of supersaturation, which enhances the remineralization. The commercially available uh, products, GC tooth mousse or recaldent or MI paste, it's all based on CPP ACP paste. Um, and Novamin, Novamin chemically, it is known as calcium sodium phosphosilicate. It's a bioactive glass consisting of minerals that have been found naturally in the body and it reacts with saliva, water, or other body fluids, resulting in desensitization. So, in clinical practice, we mainly use these agents as desensitizing agents. The titanium technology includes that titanium ion, it readily hydrolyzes H2O to expel the proton and renders the solution of low pH value. It forms a complex that is titanium phosphate complex, which is very difficult to be substituted, thereby rendering the tooth resistant to demineralization. Resin infiltration depends on the infiltration of white spot lesions, which are not cavitated with a particular type of resin, which has high rapid penetration to the tooth. So when it's combined with the other caries remineralization program, it provides long-term therapeutic benefits and also reduces the restorative costs thereby. Those nanohydroxyapatite, it's a well-known and one of the most biocompatible and uh, bioactive materials which we have. Its structure is very much similar in morphology to the apatite crystals of enamel. Enamelon consists of unstabilized calcium and phosphate salts with sodium fluoride in the form of a toothpaste. The technical issue with enamelon is that the phosphate and calcium are unstabilized, which allows the combining of the two ions into insoluble precipitates before they contact enamel or saliva, thus increasing the remineralization capacity of the tooth. Now let us uh, uh, see what all techniques we have in minimal intervention dentistry. These are mechanical rotary higher low speed bar, atraumatic restoration, air abrasion, sono abrasion, laser, chemomechanical agent, pit and fissure sealants, ozone technology, resin infiltration, preventive resin restoration, silver diamond fluoride, pulse technique, selective caries removal. Coming to the rotary higher low speed bar, uh, rotary bar is used universally. Uh, but it, because it easily cuts through the carious dentin, uh, however, uh, by cutting through the carious dentin, it opens the healthy tubules also, often resulting in sensitivity or pain. So for ultra-conservative treatment, we have a bar called as fissurotomy bar, which is a new approach, and it is very less invasive also. Micro-STF, micro-NTF, these bars are designed specifically for pit and fissure uh, lesions. Atraumatic restorative technique is a procedure carried out only using hand instruments and adhesive restoration. It's very helpful in eradicating and controlling the speed of the caries, especially in regions with minimum sophisticated technology. 
Air repression involves bombarding the tooth surface with high velocity aluminum oxide particles carried in a stream of air. There are several new systems which have uh, uh, come in the market utilizing air pressure of like various air pressures to cut the dental tissues. It is relatively painless, but the disadvantage is that there is no tactile sensation and it may result in removal of the healthy tooth structure also. And patients, especially with dust allergy or asthma or other respiratory issues are not very comfortable with this type of caries removal. Since 1950s, ultrasonic vibration with high frequency have been recommended for carious lesion removal. Sono abrasion is one such modification of this ultrasonic vibration. It's a technique for selective preparation of enamel and dentin, offering excellent efficacy, quality, and safety. It utilizes high frequency sonic air scalers with modified abrasive tips, which describe an elliptical motion with transverse and longitudinal movement. These tips are diamond coated on the cutting side and they use water as a coolant. Uh, it produces less noise and less vibration. Coming to the lasers, lasers, they produce beams of coherent and very high intensity light. They're very effective in cavity preparation, caries removal, restoration removal, and treatment of dentinal sensitivity. What they do is they modify the calcium to phosphate ratio, they reduce the carbonate to phosphorus ratio, and uh, leads to the formation of more stable and less acidic compounds, which reduces the susceptibility to acid attack. Of course, the combination of lasers and fluorides can be very promising in caries prevention. Because the caries materials contain higher water content compared to the healthy dental heart tissues, the ablation efficiency of laser is greater in caries than that of the healthy tissue. An area laser, that is erbium, yttrium, aluminum, and garnet laser, is considered an effective instrument for cavity preparation. It stimulates the formation of secondary dentin and also has an antibacterial effect. It modifies the dentin structure and makes them more favorable to dental adhesives. Coming to the chemomechanical caries removal, this method involves chemical softening of the caries dentin followed by its gentle removal with spoon excavators. It is very much favorable in pediatric patients and in situations where local analgesics is not possible. The commercially available preparations are caridex, carisol, papakeri, and so on. Pit and fissure morphology is one of the main risk factors for caries, especially in molars. What sealants do is sealants modify this morphology and they prevent the bacterial colonization and fermentable uh, substrate exposure and the area can be very easily cleaned. These are effective in arresting non-cavitated enamel caries lesions. Resin composites and glass ionomers are most commonly used pit and fissure sealants. Ozone is an energized form of oxygen. It's a powerful oxidant with the ability to kill bacteria, spores, and viruses. Ozone therapy is based on the premise that the primary caries lesions, when exposed to ozone, become sterile and they remineralize after some time. However, the restoration should be planned only after two to three months because the dentin becomes very soft after the ozone therapy and it will not support immediate restoration. It avoids the need for local anesthesia and unnecessary drilling. The systems available with us are helozone, dentozone, and so on. Coming to the preventive resin restoration, here the resin is placed in carious and adjacent carious susceptible area, thus sealing them from the environment. Uh, the uh, different types of PRRs are, uh, are type A, wherein the suspicious pits and fissures where caries removal is limited only to the enamel. In type B, the, there is incipient lesion in dentin, but which is confined and very small. Whereas in type C, there is a need for greater exploratory preparation in dentin. The common materials used are composites and GIC. Coming to the interesting um, component that is silver diamond fluoride, it has proven to have uh, the ability to halt the caries process and simultaneously prevent the formation of new caries. Uh, the most commonly used percentage in clinical practice is 38% of SDF, 25% of silver uh, has antimicrobial action in this, 8% of ammonia uh, acts as solvent, and 5% of fluoride helps in remineralization. It it forms a 
removes calcium fluoride and silver phosphate, which hardens the tooth, making it less susceptible to caries. Uh, the advantages are there is no pain and there's control of infection also with low cost and it's completely non-invasive. So it is very much favorable in pediatric patients who are very um, non-cooperative. And uh, here we can modify this technique slightly, uh, which is known as SMART, that is silver modified atraumatic restorative treatment, wherein SDF is first applied to the carious tooth structure followed by GIC restoration. The only disadvantage uh, with the silver diamond fluoride is it renders black stain wherever applied. So we have to inform the patient and the parent beforehand of this disadvantage as well. Coming to the HALS technique, it's a method of managing dentinal carious lesions in primary molars by cementing the preformed metal crowns over them. This technique doesn't require any local anesthesia or any tooth preparation. It basically seals the tooth, thus altering the environment, leading to the change in bacterial profile, thus arresting the lesion from growing. Initially, immediately after the restoration, slight occlusal discrepancy will be there, but uh, within few days, the occlusion gets settled. I would like to conclude by saying that it is really not possible to imitate the natural tooth structure as it is, but it's best to retain it as far as possible. And our profession has now a better understanding of prevention of dental disease and with the advent of new smart materials in the market helps in practice building and also enhances the concept of patient-centered simplification. Thank you.